I'm Jeff Boyce Cars and today I'm doing a, doing a little bit of a free landing and uh, I'm going to review the free lander a little bit and my uh, my paddle board which is quite funny. You'll have to excuse the uh, the noisy sheep. Last time I was down in this spot I was in the Volvo but today it's the Land Rover. Now I bought this Land Rover a little while ago and it hasn't really appeared very much on the channel and that's because I've mostly just been using it. In terms of modifications, all I've done so far is remove all the stickers that were on it. And we've just used it like a family car. And we really like it. Um, kids like it, wife likes it, I like it. So I've done, I don't know how many miles since I had this car, but I can show you a little bit more about it now. Um, firstly, it's got a roof rack, which is kind of attached in quite a dodgy way, but it just sort of works. So I'm okay with that. Someone in one of the comments on one of the Land Rover pages was like, oh, you've just attached that with exhaust brackets. But it looks good and it works. So it works, doesn't it? Um, I love that with a Freelander, you have an opening rear door. So that means you can have stuff on the roof and still get full access to everything that's in your boot. There's uh, one bike, two skateboards, and a canoe paddle in there at the moment. There's usually two bikes in there. And I like this custom homemade tray. That is really handy. I mean, what a useful vehicle this actually is. I do have some plans for this Land Rover. There's a couple of bits that I would like to replace and improve. Um, my indicator defenders, have broken i suspect these are just ebay jobs let me know in the comments if these are just ebay things they feel pretty cheap so i'm gonna get some more of those because the cross bars have come off since my first video um i've got a top mounted light a light bar and it's it's a bit you know it's a bit pikey the way it's been mounted but it just sort of works so it's brilliant it's actually brighter than the sun which is hilarious and it gives us a bit of a laugh um you know, someone's coming at you with their main beam on and they're not changing their lights. Well, that's on them, isn't it? They get the sun in their eyes. I like my headlight defenders. Those seem to be working. I could do some fresh number plates. If you're a number plate company and you sell number plates or private number plates, get in touch with me. I have got a plan for this car, but I don't want to spend my own money on it. So if you can give me one for free and I can give you a shout out, that works for everybody, doesn't it? Sort of. Um, I'm going to paint these bits on the bars. So maybe I need to get in touch with my man at High Coat uh, for some satin black. And at the same time, I'm going to do all of the plastics around it as well because they need doing. Again, my indicator defender on this side is broken. Those are naff, aren't they? Uh, Land Rover people, let me know if better quality ones are better. Yeah, um, the window tinting again is another thing that needs addressing. The window tinting has been done by the previous owner. And uh, I don't think he'll mind me saying that he hasn't done a very good job. So it will be going in for, it will probably be going in for some window tinting. If that didn't have the exterior um, deflectors on, you'd see just how bad that is. I mean, you can see that it's coming off in the corner there. Uh, I can see why people do their own window tinting but I just have never, ever had a good enough experience with it to justify attempting it myself. In the back, rubber floor mats. Uh, interior is held up pretty well. It's probably covered in cookies and all sorts, various detritus from having two small humans. I love these overhead storage containers. They're brilliant, really handy. There's just so many places to put stuff in this car. Uh, in the front, you've got, for example, this bit here for the driver where I can hide things like fuses and spark plugs and I got a tray there and I got a little bit there where I can put stuff and then I got a bit there where I can put stuff as well and then I've got a cubby hole over there which is full of rubbish and then I've got some blackberries from when we went out in this the other week and we're doing blackberry picking and then I've got a cubby hole there as well and then I can put stuff down here and then it's just it's just brilliant it's very very well thought out um I like the driving position, it's nice and high. I tell you what though, can you get the seat any lower? What do you do if you're tall in a Freelander? I'm not all that tall and um, I sometimes sort of struggle, like when I'm wearing a hat. But if I was taller, I'd really struggle. So maybe they are just for short people. Or maybe I'm missing something and there's something that I'm not doing right and maybe the seat does go down. Not completely sure. Um, 169,000 miles on this one on a K-series engine. And um, 
no comments about head gaskets because it's great. It's not too, too bad on fuel and uh, it's lovely to drive. So that is my Land Rover Freelander. Very easy to live with and a car that I didn't expect to fall in love with. Got some plans for it, got some improvement, possibly gonna have some stickers, a little bit like the Shark Attack truck, but um, not totally sure on that yet. Right, my paddleboard. My paddleboard is an FB Sport. I think it's, how big is it? I think it's 11 foot six. It says here, 10 foot six. Right, so it's a 10 foot six FB Sport paddleboard and it comes with everything you need, including a pump and a paddle. So I'm gonna pump this up and then I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about it. They're not bad, these. Most of these paddleboard companies seem to be based in China. And when you order one, a lot of them will ship from China. This is a Chinese one that I bought on Facebook Marketplace. And despite having the most hilarious marketing photos in the brochure that I've ever seen, literally Photoshop skills of a child actually seems quite good. Um, I only paid 180 quid for this cash -ish, Uh off of Facebook Marketplace. And then when I got over there, turns out the guy that was selling it is actually a Freelander man himself. So um, yeah, it's really, I'm really, really pleased with it. It does seem to be pretty good. So uh, let's get it inflated and uh, pick this video up from there. And then we're looking for, um, what does it say? 15 PSI is what we're after. So uh, bear with me a minute. There's your workout right there. Crikey. Once you've inflated your board, if you haven't decided that uh, you're not going paddle boarding afterwards because you're knackered, after all, because you're knackered, you can put your fin on. Now the fin just slides through like that. So obviously you can't fold the board away with the fin on, so it should push all the way to the back, all the way through, and then that slides in to lock the fin in place. And now you're ready. In true Jeff fashion, I don't have my tripod with me or my GoPro or a mount or anything like that. So uh, let's see if we can balance the phone somewhere and film me falling in. Good job the river's full of bricks here. I've built a tripod. It's not a bottle of wine on the front, it's a uh, blackcurrant juice. down and go uh, up the river. Cheers for watching. Ugh. Right, all finished. I'm back now. I've gone back to the Land Rover, which is up there. You can just see it, but I thought I'd bring my phone out on the river just to show you. So I've been up the river. I'm not sure how long I've been actually, or how far. If I manage to work it out by looking at it on Google Maps, I'll uh, post it up on this little image. But this is the River Seven. This is my paddle board my little bottle of blackcurrant juice, and my hat and my jumper, and my paddle. That's all I've got. And it's been absolutely lovely. Seen all sorts, kingfishers, cormorants, I think they're called cormorants. Um, big birds of prey, eagles, bald ones maybe. Um, fish, big fish, small fish. Highly recommend getting yourself out on your local river on a cheap paddle board. Tell you what, it's cheaper than counseling. Counseling's 45 pound an hour. I think I, I think I might have paid, did I pay 90 pound? I think I once paid 90 pound an hour for counseling. It's cheaper to buy a paddle board. Right, I am now drifting in the wind away from where I need to be. And if you miss your junction on a river, it's a bit more of a disaster than missing your junction on a motorway. Cause to be honest, it all looks the same. So if you miss the bit you're supposed to be getting out, you're shafted. 
you have to go down to the next town and get a lift back. Right, let's paddle back to the Land Rover. The paddle itself is not fantastic quality, but it does the job pretty well and it all just packs down. Uh, it's telescopic basically, so undo that clip there. That will then unlock it and you can slide it straight down. Easy. Um, so it packs down pretty small. That's as small as it goes actually, but I'll go across the, uh, across the car nicely. I can also remove the bottom section by popping that through. So pretty small. It all goes in a tiny backpack. Right, easiest way to strap your paddleboard or surfboard to your Land Rover. There's a thousand ways to skin this cat, but I'm gonna show you the nice easy way. I haven't got very far to go today. So I'm gonna do a one strap wonder. Right, get your strap. This is a nice long one. It's gonna go underneath the front bar there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to strap a paddleboard on a car in these 65 simple steps. Right, that's what it's meant to look like. Jeff buys cars. Still, YouTube's most boring car channel.